Check this out. The sky around Valley City. Right. Sorry, Watford City is filled with smoke after this well explosion in western North Dakota. It's pretty incredible. The fire is actually so hot at the White Owl saltwater disposal site that crews are letting it burn itself out. Amazingly, no one was hurt yesterday, but witnesses say they could feel the heat from two blocks away. Nearly one and a half million dollars worth of oil and gas were lost in that fire. Authorities want to make sure the salt water and the brine stays contained because if the liquid were to get out, it would be worse than an oil spill. Firefighters haven't even been able to get close enough to start investigating what caused that explosion. Hi everyone and thank you for waking up with us on this Friday morning. I'm Jordan Schreer here with Lisa Badeau. We're just getting started with your news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan for your day. We have new information this morning on the body found near some railroad tracks in Valley City. Authorities are now saying that the body was that of a teenage boy. Officers were called to the northeast part of town near some railroad tracks yesterday afternoon, and that's where they found a body. NewsDakota.com is reporting that the Valley City School Superintendent sent a statement to students and parents yesterday identifying the victim as high school student Chase Jennison. Police are asking anyone with any information on his death to come forward. Now, nine minutes before the top of the hour, let's get a check of that chilly forecast with Lisa Green. Chilly and for some of us snowy this morning. This is a look down along the South Dakota state line on our Dakota Magic Storm Team Skycam Network. We're from Dakota Magic Casino. And you can see that there's some flakes, some light flakes flying around with some snow down in the Southern Valley. A look at your radar right now. You can see that snow, especially down to the south and west over by Ellendale. It's trying to spread northward through Stutzman County and Barnes County this morning. Fargo's still quiet, but we could rule, we can't rule out some snowflakes. Could see that moving in here as we watch this system overall progress eastward. So overall, it's going to be sliding right along this diagonal here, maybe moving a little farther north at that uh, into the next couple of hours. Uh, but overall, northern valleys, you should stay pretty quiet here this morning. You're just going to be stuck in the frigid weather. Temperatures into the teens to about 20 below. It's 20 below right now in Roseau. And the southern valley, very different story. 10 to 20 degrees warmer, even warmer than that uh, in some areas with the high of, or a current temperature of 5 degrees in Wapaton. It's zero in Fargo. Wind chills are low everywhere, but they're even more hazardous up to the north where we have some wind. We're looking at wind chills down to the mid 30s below. So a wind chill advisory there and you'll want to make sure you're taking precautions and wearing the proper clothing and gear as you're stepping outside here today. So here's a look at our hour by hour planner that chance for snow, mainly southern half of the valley here this morning and we'll continue that through the late morning hours and into the early afternoon before that whole system overall works its way out. And once that happens, we'll start to see that colder air take over the Southern Valley too today. But your afternoon temperatures a little milder than this morning up north, but again, frigid, well below zero throughout the day today up north. Southern Valley, we start to see some hints at some dropping temperatures at that point, but holding steady basically around zero degrees. Heading into tonight, those temperatures continue to drop and we're looking at some numbers that are going to be into the teens to 20s below to start off the day tomorrow. So just brutal. That's air temperature that's not factoring in wind chills. Maybe an inch or two of snow down in the southwest and we'll continue to see a couple of snow chances Saturday, Saturday night into early Sunday and then again for the day on MLK Day as well. So just cold and unsettled. Let's check in now with Al. Morning, Lise. Good morning, everyone. We're out here on the Metro Interstate Loop this morning taking a look at things, and things are looking pretty darn good. Traffic most definitely has picked up. I thought it might, and it certainly has. Uh, westbound I-94 traffic's pretty darn busy this morning. Eastbound I-94, not as busy as normal, but th that too has picked up. Interstate 29, northbound, well, let me tell you, there is all kinds of action there. We're seeing some congestion this morning again between 32nd Avenue South and the tri-level in particular, but that really does continue all the way up to uh, 13th Avenue. We have a couple of stalled vehicles out here you need to know about. One of them is on eastbound Interstate 94, right under the Vets Boulevard slash 9th Street overpass. Make sure you're looking out for that. The other one is on southbound Interstate 29. It's right by the, right by the ramp off I-29 on the 12th Avenue North. That's a van there. And in both cases, no lights, no flashers. Look out for those stalled vehicles. Road surfaces are great. Travel speeds about 60 to 65. Drive carefully today and always. Al Ahmed, Valley Today Traffic. Police want people in the FM area to be aware of, 
be aware of a nationwide crime ring that's targeting women by breaking into their cars and taking their purses. The felony lane gang hit at least a dozen cars in Fargo last year, many at daycares, sporting events, even fitness centers. They break into cars and steal cash or credit cards. If they only find a checkbook or an ID, they'll take your identity and find someone who looks like you who could go into a bank and cash a check. Fargo police believe the gang is now on a crime spree in western North Dakota, including Bismarck and Minot. Three people are facing drug charges after a bust related to recent heroin overdoses in Fargo and Ottertail County. Police served a search warrant at 3414 Birdie Street North about 1030 yesterday morning. That's the neighborhood just south of Edgewood Golf Course. Officers say a man inside jumped out of a second story window when police arrived, but he was tracked by his footprints in the snow to a nearby house. Joseph Kudrowski of Fargo was arrested. Billy Joe McGinnis Kudrowski of Fargo and Gina Stein of Ottertel, Minnesota were also taken into custody. Police say they found heroin, marijuana, pills and other drug paraphernalia during their search of the house. The North Dakota House is on board with getting rid of Sunday opening laws in the state. A bill that ends the so-called blue laws passed yesterday, 56 to 35. Supporters say government should not be telling people when their business can be open or when they should go to church or rest. The bill allows retail stores to open before noon on Sundays. Thousands of people are expected to rally in Washington, D.C. today for the annual March for Life rally. The crowd will gather on the National Mall around noon and march to the U.S. Supreme Court building. The pro-life group is calling on lawmakers to end abortions. A big crowd is expected in downtown Fargo tomorrow for the annual FM Women's March. Doors open at noon at the Fargo Civic Center with a rally starting at 1. The march will then follow at 2, starting just outside the Civic Center in downtown. We want to share this feel-good story with you on this Friday morning. Moorhead Public Schools posted on Facebook about lunch money donations. Northwestern Bank pitched in $300 to cover unpaid meal balances at Ellen Hopkins Elementary. And then an anonymous donor stepped up with $1,800 for Dorothy Dodds Elementary. Well, it is time to wake up and smell the bacon as Happy Harry's <laughs> is bringing back their beer and bacon festival this weekend. The Valley Today's Abby Furchner is joining us live from Grand Forks this morning. Good morning, Abby. Well, good morning, guys. I'm here at the Alaris Center where tomorrow at 5 o'clock it is going to be smelling like bacon here as Happy Harry's is having their sixth annual beer and bacon festival. And I'm joined by Jeff Novak, who's with L&M Meats, and you're going to be having some delicious samples for everyone tomorrow Absolutely. night. Come on out. A day without bacon is like a day without <laughs> sunshine. I love that. So what will people be able to taste test? We're going to have um, a sausage called, it's a bratwurst. It's got bacon and cheddar cheese in it. Then we're also going to have a big hit. It's called Bacon Links. Mm -hmm. And all the bacon that you'll be tasting at the show tomorrow will be from our store, Ellen and Meats. Yum. It sounds delicious. So after you have a ton of bacon and sausage, you can wash it down with a brew. And I'm here with Johnny Barbosa, who is with Half Brothers Brewing Co. And so what type of brews will be able to get tomorrow. You'll be able to get a golden ale, a coffee brown ale, a IPA, a New England IPA, and an imperial stout, and a barrel aged imperial stout. What is your guys' most popular, do you think? It would be the Grand Force Classic, the golden ale. I did have I did have a sip of that this morning, and it was absolutely delicious. But once again, this is going to be from 5 to 8 tomorrow. It is 21 plus, but you can get tickets in advance for $25 or here at the Alaris Center for 30 And we'll have all that information and more on valleynewslive.com. Abby Furchner reporting live for us this morning. Thank you. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, about 10% of people say this is the first thing they do when they get out of bed in the morning. Well, the answer is they check on their pets. you got to make sure they're doing okay. Remember, you can take part in our question of the morning on the Valley News Live Facebook page. Go ahead, join the conversation. But my favorite answer was wake up and turn on the Valley today. Oh, it's a good choice, especially on a day like today. Yes. Because we're talking about snow. We're talking about some frigid weather, too, here in the forecast. That snow is far enough north where we're looking at Jamestown perhaps being affected, Ellendale, and Fargo may see a few flakes today. Maybe an inch or two of snow down by the Ellendale area where we're closer to the center of this system that's uh, moving its way through the plains. And that means with the cloud cover overhead, that's helping to keep our temperatures not as frigid as the Northern Valley. We're at zero in Fargo. In Grand Forks, 12 below, and it's 20 below right now in Roseau. 
we don't have much wind there, so our wind chill is our air temperature, but there are places where wind chills are down into the 30s below, including Grand Fork. So bundle up and gradually we'll see that colder air take over the Southern Valley for tonight too. Thank you, Lisa. The Today Show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but remember the Valley Today